part three. Okay, this is where the rubber really hits the road, because even after you get the solution to this and you read it, you're like, huh? Okay, at least that's, that's what I thought when I read the solution. I, I understood what they were getting at, but I was like, that's a weird way to put it. So let me see if I can try and put it a little clearer. Okay. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this equation again. Okay. Uh, think about it as I read this question. Show that no point above the x-axis can be hit by firing at two different angles. Mm. Okay, so this is about saying, look, you can hit places, the same place, two different ways, like so, okay? But now it's saying, okay, well, if you wanna hit the same place, these two angles, they're not just random angles, they have a relationship to each other, okay? They're related in a way that if one of them um, is less than pi and four, the other one can't be. So you can see it, right? If I wanna hit this place, one's gotta be a low one and one's gotta be a high one. Okay, so they're related to it. If you want, if you make one high, the other one's got to be low, or vice versa. Okay, now uh, I, I I ran really quickly over the question. It actually told us something really important. It says show that no point above the x-axis. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so what does that mean? Like algebraically, how can I write that? No point above the x-axis. What does that mean? Yeah, that's right. So I already had a condition on x. Okay. So now I'm thinking about, you can think about it two ways. You can either do it as a proof by contradiction, and you can say y has to be greater than zero and the show doesn't work. Or you can say, okay, well y, uh, which is sort of, I, I'm gonna go that way. You can say y isn't greater than zero, but that's a bit harder, I think, to think about. So I'm gonna think about points that satisfy this as well. And I'm gonna show that you can't satisfy these two inequalities and satisfy that at the same time, okay? All right, so, um, Come back to this. Remember I told you, there's a relationship between these two solutions, okay? We have to get at it somehow. Um, and we have to relate it to pi and four somehow. Now, when you have two solutions for a quadri quadratic equation, there aren't that many ways that they relate to each other, okay? Uh, in fact, there's only two ways. There's what they add up to, and there's what they multiply to, sum and product of roots, okay? So let's think about each of them in turn. Let's do sum of roots, that's nice and, nice and easy. So alpha plus beta, I don't need to write alpha plus beta because I know what alpha and beta are. They're tan this and tan that, okay? Sum of roots is what? <coughs> minus b on a, right? Minus b on a. So minus b is just gonna be x, and a is hmm, one over four h x squared. Is that okay? All right. And un disentangle, what, disentangle? Untangle. M make this fraction neater, it's a bit of a disaster at the moment. The 4h goes on the top, that x squared is gonna cancel one. So I'm gonna have, what, 4h on x. Happy with that? Okay, now this is interesting because it's, it's nice and neat and it shows us part of the relationship between these two. But it turns out to be not very useful, okay? Because when you have a look at what this is gonna tell us and what things it relates to together, it has nothing to do with the condition that I'm really interested in. Can you see that? Because the condition I'm really interested in has to do with y. Okay? And there are no y's in this equation. Okay? So this might be true, but it's not useful to what I'm actually trying to work out. Okay? So go for your other option. This was, this was sum of roots. Let's do the product. Okay? Um, the product is c on a. Alright, so there's c. Um, Alpha times beta is equal to C on A, which is still that. Okay, now, immediately, even without going any further, you can see this is going to be more useful to us than this. Because the Y is there, and it's not going to like cancel out or anything like that. The question is, well, how am I going to get something useful out of it? Uh, well, again, let's tidy this up a little bit. That thing on itself is just going to be 1. Okay, and then this thing again, let's neaten it up. That one on 4h is gonna come on the top, so it's gonna be 4hy on x squared. Yes? Okay, and that's the product. Okay, now, remember what I'm trying to work out here. I've got this, this thing here, that y is positive, okay? Um, I also know x is not zero, which is handy, because it's on the denominator, okay? And h is just some constant, depending on how hard I fire it, okay? So if y is positive, 
what does that tell me? I'm going to turn this equation into an inequality, okay? I'm going to turn the equation into an inequality. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff over here. And you can see why in this step that I'm going to make, you've really got to be good at inequalities to see this, okay? I'm going to I'll leave the quadratic equation there. That's kind of useful to us. <clears throat> this is y is greater than 0, I said that. Okay. Now, let's just pick, picture this, okay? If you've got some unknown number, okay, let's call it k, right? And it's greater than, I don't know, say 5 plus, now, what have we got here? Oh, uh, sorry, I meant equals. If I know this thing isn't going to be negative, if I know it's not going to make the 5 smaller, it's not going to reduce anything, okay? In other words, if it's some kind of positive thing, right? That means I can say k is 5 plus something, anything. I don't know how big it is, but it's, it's bigger, right? So whatever it is, it's going to be greater than 5. Does that make sense? Do you see the indeterminateness of this is what turns an equation into an inequality? You see the relationship between these two? Okay, now, come back over here. I don't have a k, I've got something, I know a little more about it actually, it's this product, okay? Now what I've got is it's equal to one plus some positive thing, because that's, that's my starting point. Okay? I don't know what it is, but um, where'd I go? X is gonna be positive, H is gonna be positive, they're all, so it's all good, okay? Um, and you can say that because H is positive, Y is positive, X squared is also positive, okay? So therefore, here's where I make my leap. And you can see I had to make some kind of leap to an inequality, just like in part two, because what you've got there is, uh, you know, theta one's less than pi and four, and theta two's pi and four, less than pi and four, okay? Or that it can't be that. So I'm now gonna say this is, what did I say? That's greater than one, okay? I don't know how much bigger than one it is, but it's bigger, okay? Okay, now, there was my first inequality step, going from here to here. You've gotta pull out another one. That's why this is the last part of the last question, okay? Think about this, right? Again, let's think about it in terms of some random numbers, okay? If I've got k times some other number, and it turns out that it's crucial that it's, it's <coughs> 1, okay? Just think about some of the numbers that could make this work, okay? Um, for instance, let's think about if I made k something like, you know, a half, okay? So this is smaller than 1. Then to compensate, to make the whole product greater than 1, the other number, l, it's got to be quite significantly larger. Right? Like half times a quarter, that won't do. Half times one also won't do. It's not going to satisfy this. Okay? So as I make one small, the other one's got to get big to compensate. Okay? Or alternatively, both of them can be large. Okay? And that'll be fine. So what this implies is k must be greater than one and or uh, l must be greater than one. Okay? So one's a really important number. If, you, if you've got both of them being equal to one, you don't satisfy the inequality. One of them's got to be bigger. All right, so therefore, if I go from this statement to here, right, now I can say something independently about each one. Can you see where I'm, I'm trying to get at? I've got, therefore, therefore, tan theta, one, has to be greater than one, and or tan theta, two, has to be greater than one. All right, so you can see how I've gone from this product to these two independent statements, okay? But, you see now why it's pi on 4? Tan of pi on 4, right, that's equal to 1. It's 1045, right? So this is kind of like my boundary value, right? If I want these two, or one of them at least, to be true, then I have to get past here, right? So therefore, I can go from this, theta 1 must be greater than pi on 4, and or theta 2 must also be greater than pi on 4. Yeah, I know, right? So the reason why this is the opposite way around to what the question is, is because I started with the opposite condition. I said that it has to be above the x-axis, right? Whereas they're saying um, no point above the x-axis. So they're saying this, okay, does that make sense? So because I've gone the other way around, it's greater than zero. The reason why I did that, by the way, is because inequalities are easier to work with when they're that way. I guess if you'd said it was less than zero, then all of this would be backwards, okay? Uh, you'd say y is less than zero, therefore this is negative, therefore tan theta one, tan theta two must be less than one, and so on. Okay. But there you go. So I, I, I need to conclude, but that's the guts of the question.
So I hope it makes sense. There's another solution that they provide, but I don't think it's as sound, and you can ask me later if you want me to explain why. Okay, this is the way that. Thanks, Ben.